trains have played a major role in shaping the development of the African continent. Today, across southern Africa, they do more than simply transport goods and commuters. From a unique hotel in the heart of an iconic game park, the so-called train on the bridge. We do have guests that are coming from different countries. So when they visit the train for the first time, it's breathtaking. To one of the world's most luxurious passenger trains. In the beginning, I really thought we were going to get a lot more train enthusiasts. 95% of our passengers were just travelers looking for an experience. And across South Africa, committed enthusiasts are working to keep classic trains on the tracks. We're enthusiasts, but we're professional enthusiasts. We have to maintain the equipment. A lot of work, a lot of money goes into it. We want everything we've got to work. And they all attract visitors from around the world. Uh, we've had people from the USA, Canada, Germany, UK, Australia. Well, it's part of our heritage. I mean, railways built the world as industrial age. Railways built it. These are the trains of Southern Africa. This is Inside Africa. For more than 150 years, the history of South Africa's railways has been filled with classic trains and some colorful characters. One was the pet and later assistant of double-leg amputee signalman James Jumper Wide. Jack the Baboon was taught how to pull levers as needed and did so until his death in 1890, after almost 10 years of faultless service. Today, more than 130 years later, one South African company is taking passengers back to the golden age of rail travel. The Rovos rail story dates back to the mid-1980s, when founder Rohan Voss was approached by a colleague with an unusual request to help create a steam train preservation group. So I got involved financially, helped them a little bit with this, that and the other. And then I thought it might be fun to have my own locomotive and have my own coaches. He purchased a locomotive and four coaches and decided to apply for permission to use track belonging to the South African Railways. I applied. They came back and said, yes, you can. Uh, but the tariff was very high and I complained. And they said, why don't you sell tickets? And that was the end of the hobby. I then purchased another three carriages and uh, we launched in 1989, uh, 34 and a half years ago. Operations manager Joe Matala has been a part of the team since the beginning. I joined Robo Trail at inception back in 1989. I was here when we did the first trip, so I grew up in a company. And uh, there's no job in this business that I haven't done. For more than 30 years, the acquisition of locomotives and carriages has never stopped. The first purchase, in fact, was for 38 from the railways back in 1994. And of course, we've been building ever since. And we've got the 140 coaches running now. We are still finding coaches on sidings all over the country uh, that are rusted to hell and gone. And we buy them scrap there, and then we've got to make them roadworthy or railworthy. Here, we take old rotten things that people have thrown away, we uh, bring them back to life. It's the biggest waking junkyard in the world. Today, Rovos Rail boasts meticulously restored vintage carriages and offers luxury suites and surprisingly spacious cabins, all with ensuite bathrooms. As its fleet grew, so too did the number of Rovos Rail routes. In 1993, they traveled to Dar es Salaam for the first time. Financially, it was a, a huge disaster for me, but because we lost everything that we had uh, sending the train there. But today, it's the best decision I ever made because we're running five trips a year to Dar es Salaam now, and we've also done from Dar es Salaam across the continent to uh, Angola, and that's the first train in history to have done that. During the 2000s, they continued to offer new journeys across the subcontinent. We do Namibia, we have Vic Falls on a regular basis, and we do the golf tour, we have Durban, and we came up with a, a, a trilogy now, which is a 15-day journey, 
And so there we are. We have about 10 different products now. We are doing every route that there is to do in Southern Africa now. Today, passengers are departing from Victoria Falls and heading south through Zimbabwe to the Rovos Rail headquarters in Pretoria, South Africa. En route, the train travels on one of the longest sections of straight railway in the world and passes scattered ancient baobab trees before crossing into South Africa. On the last leg of its journey, it travels through the Vatapurt Valley, winding its way alongside the Sand River. Wherever you are, however, the train offers a level of service one would expect in a five-star hotel. I really need a very strong team, and I believe it's something that we have here at Rov as well. And we all have one common goal, which is to make each and every uh, passenger on board the train um, to get the, the service that they paid for. After sundowner drinks in one of the lounges, passengers return to their cabins to prepare for a formal dinner. They are called to the silver service four-course meal as they would have been a hundred years ago. The onboard dining experience is exceptional and along with an extensive and varied selection of the finest South African wines, passengers can enjoy gourmet meals prepared under somewhat challenging conditions. Without any communication, you cannot succeed in the kitchen. So you have to be a team player, then you have to be a skillful. So we are three chefs, then we have the three assistant chefs. And that time is very busy, very busy. It's like that in the kitchen when you play a chess. So this one must come there, this one must come because it must go through. It can be about 70 people, breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's not the same as other kitchens. When not enjoying the old world elegance of the dining cars, passengers can appreciate panoramic views from the observation car at the rear of the train. <laughs> Robos Rail does offer unique off-train excursions, allowing passengers to explore destinations and attractions along the route. For those on the Victoria Falls journey, this includes a game drive at Huangwe, Zimbabwe's largest national park. As journeys cross international borders and change national rail networks, it falls to operations manager Joe Matala and train manager Lawrence Zulu to keep the trains on time and the guests happy. The terrain we are operating in is very, very, very challenging. We, you know, we're operating in South Africa, we're operating in Zimbabwe, we're operating in Zambia, Tanzania, and uh, in Congo, and technology is one of the best. 80% of the time you have to speak either on a satellite phone or in a WhatsApp call. So it is very challenging that way. Of course, when we do leave and embarking on our journey with our patients on board, going to different uh, destinations, different countries, it's very important that all our staff members are very well trained. I wouldn't call us colleagues. We are more like a family. With one team member struggle, we jump in and help. From its roots in the preservation of steam locomotives, Rovos Rail has evolved, and today a fleet of Australian-made diesel locomotives form the core of their fleet. Uh, steam engines was the reason that we got into this business in the first place, but they do break down, they're old. You need a lot of water, you need a lot of coal. They use 500 litres of water per kilometre. They use 75 kilograms of coal per kilometre. Then we realised it was better to go electric anyway. We realised that from South Africa northwards, there is no electricity, no overhead cable, so we needed diesel locos. And as the business has grown, it's continued to evolve and to innovate, something it's done since its humble beginnings. I mustn't forget that at the time we started, 1989, there were no trains in the world with double beds and bathroom en suite. That didn't exist. I've seen the company grow from running one train a month in 1989, 1990, to today running uh, six, seven trains at the same time. And for Rohan Vos, for once, he's not currently eyeing out any more old locomotives. But we've got to six trains now, six trains of 21 coaches each, and for the moment that's enough.